Hey! Alright, so we're back for part two of uh, uh, creating the visual design for our course. We already have a great banner set up in our self-paced training. Now we're going to talk about some of the uh, uh, other things that you can do uh, to, to really add some flair to your course and really make it engaging for your students. Now, I know we've talked about this before, but up at the very top, there is a, uh, a course theme changer that you can select. And uh, it has a little fanned out color. And really what that does is I can select from any of these and, uh, and, and really change the look of, of my backgrounds in my course. It changes the background and it changes the font color is the two main things. Uh, the only problem with this that I found is I don't know what any of these look like until I actually select them. What is design? What's digital learning? Economics? I don't know you know what any of those things might look like for the background. So I usually don't suggest people using this unless you're really new to the course, which you guys are an advanced blackboard. You're not new. So let's go to a different part. So again, I'm going to go down to the left hand side, choose customization and teaching style. And we're going to go through a couple of these. So uh, you can see that if you go to the third one down, there's select course theme. These are the exact same options that you would get up at the top from this little fan. But in this version, I can see a nice thumbnail of what that's going to look like. So I can see now that lavender and ink and gold, how those are going to look in my class, just at least a little thumbnail. So you can go through and pick out the ones that maybe uh, don't look like uh, cheesy little kid pajamas like Blast Off. Cool, so that's one way you can change the background of your course. That's probably the easiest way. <laughs> Let's talk about some other ways that you can change your course. Right below that in select menu style is a way that you can change how this menu along the left hand side is going to look. So right now, this is the preview that it gives. I have sort of blue lettering up here and then I have only text and it's in green. Now, we could change the color of this. I could change the text color to anything that I wanted. Click on the little downward arrow, choose these, or you can even put uh, the number for it up here at the top, the hexadecimal number. Uh, if you don't want to do that though, like maybe let's say I would decide that I want some cool buttons to go with my background. Like I chose, I think we have the technology background, it's sort of purple and, and blues. Uh, so I'm going to choose some kind of new style for these buttons. So instead of just text, I'm going to choose buttons. And then you can see it sort of gives me these generic -y brown ones, which I don't like. But if I click on this downward uh, arrow, or the plus arrow, you can see that I have a button library here. And uh, you can change the button type, so you can change solid, or you can do patterns, or we can do stripes. Now the only thing that I would suggest is realizing that the that the coloring of the wording is going to be important on which background you choose. So if you choose a really busy background like one of these uh, one of these uh, pattern ones, your your actual text might be hard to read on an alligator background. <laughs> so uh, especially if you have um, if you're trying to think about and you should be thinking about um, uh, uh, any students with disabilities or, or vision problems in your class that's something to think about for sure so I'm actually uh, I would always suggest I like solid colors so I'm gonna choose a solid color and uh, uh, since ours is sort of purple I'm gonna go with one of these uh, all right so I'm gonna choose violet so if I choose violet I should click on the color and scroll back to the top and you can see that now my buttons are purple and my lettering is white and uh, I can choose even the button shape to have maybe rounded corners or rounded ends. Okay, so I'm gonna apply that change down here at the bottom. I'm gonna hit submit. Great, now you can see my buttons are nice and purple uh, and, and, really, and really show off everything here. Now, there is a couple bad things about changing this away uh, from the defaults in Blackboard. You can see that some of my lettering runs off the side a little bit or anything with a double line, uh, the buttons don't fill in that exact area. So see, now I have become a Blackboard master, I can't really see the master in there. So uh, when you do change things like this inside of Blackboard, you really have to make sure that, okay, maybe I just want to call this Blackboard master uh, instead of become a Blackboard master. Just some of those little things, and little hitches inside of Blackboard. Now let's talk about actually adding some images to your uh, 
uh, to your Blackboard course. And these can be really important. I'm actually going to do an announcement, uh, announcing myself as the instructor of Blackboard Self-Paced. And this is something you should definitely consider for your class. Um, having something that shows who you are and has a picture of you and, and tells a little bit about yourself. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into announcements and I'm going to create an announcement. Great. So I'm going to call this announcement uh, Great, so I added a little blurb about myself. Yours would probably be longer than that, but this is just an example. And right now, let's say I wanted to add an image. So if you don't actually see all of these options, uh, it might be that because this uh, arrow is clicked up, so if you click on the downward arrow, it'll give you more options. And one of those is to insert or edit an image. And I don't know if we've actually talked about this in any of the training, so I wanna make sure I hit on it. So if I click on that insert an image, it gives me this pop-up. And inside of this pop-up, I can either link to an image URL, which I would actually suggest because then it will show up in everyone's browser. Sometimes if you uh, just put direct content in here, sometimes Internet Explorer sometimes has a hard time seeing it or certain other uh, browsers. Um, but if you don't have that yet, uh, you can just browse your computer and I'm going to find a picture of myself. So I'm going to go in here and find the picture of me. Great. So here's my image off to the side and make sure not to forget these two other buttons up here at the top. So we're, I'm going to click on appearance and right now, so my image is that I just uploaded is 250 by 247. Now that seems like a good size, but let's say I figured that's a little bit too big. Uh, I want to make that a little bit smaller. I can change that inside of here to 150 and then it'll automatically, if I keep constraint proportions on, it'll keep it that same size. Now another important thing here is there's an alignment and what alignment is going to do is where is that picture going to sit on the page and I really want it to be on the far left. I want it to be sitting on the left and all my content uh, about me on the right. And then it sort of gives you a little preview here. You can see that my, my lettering is bumped right up against my picture. So I'm going to give it a little horizontal space. I'm going to say 5 pixels of horizontal space. So you can see now that it's given me a little bit of breathing room between my picture and my content. So that's definitely important. I can also give a border if I'd like. So if I add maybe a one pixel border around it, that sort of gives a nice effect. In fact, I'm going to even make it two, two border. Okay, so now I'm going to actually go to advance as well. And this is where you could add extra things to your, uh, uh, to your image. So let's say if I wanted to do an alternate image, when people mouse over the top of it, sort of like a website, or if they clicked on it, you could do that. Uh, the last thing that I want to uh, uh, suggest for all of the images that you're going to upload to Blackboard is to give them an image description and a title. And uh, this really helps if you have uh, any disabled students in your class with any of that uh, disability uh, uh, usefulness for your class. So I'm going to give uh, my image description as Ryan Higley. and the title as Brian Hinckley. Okay, so now I'm gonna insert, and now you can see that I have my picture inside uh, uh, the text box here with my writing. Now, if I wanna add more, I can absolutely do that. Uh, and you can see that it just keeps everything right in place. Okay, so now that I have that, uh, they also uh, say that you can change the, uh, the color of the title that you're going to use. So let's say I know that this is gonna go with my purple over here. So I'm gonna change my, the color to a purple. I'm gonna say apply. So now, now that I have everything set up, I'm gonna hit submit. Now you can see that I have a nice image of myself and then also the uh, the content over to the right hand side, which is much more engaging and pleasing to the eye for students than just a bio about myself with no picture. Okay, so the last thing that I want to talk about is adding a YouTube video to your uh, content. 
uh, to your course. So a lot of times people will just add the YouTube video and uh, and leave it as it is as the defaults. And I feel like there's some extra stuff that we can do if you're going to add a YouTube video to your course, which a lot of people do. So let's talk about that real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go to the advanced section. And I'm going to build some content and add a YouTube video. Okay, so I'm going to search for a YouTube video. Okay. I'm going to select that video. And here's where I would give a description of the video. So I'm going to say... And then here's where some of the options is that I normally change. So the view that you get by default is a thumbnail. And what that will show is that'll just show one single thumbnail of the image. You'll click on that and then that will take you in a new tab over to YouTube. I would rather just embed the video inside a Blackboard. That means it'll play really easily inside a Blackboard and it looks a lot nicer. Students don't have to navigate away from Blackboard. They can stay right within your module, right within your course, watch the video and move on to the next thing. So that's always a big, a big part that I like. And then um, I'll show you another couple tricks once we actually submit this. So I'm going to submit it. And if we go down to the bottom here, you can see that uh, here's our video and it's inside a blackboard and it does look nice. The only thing is there's some extra stuff and there's just the way that blackboard automatically generically places things that I think we should change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the top here and say edit. Now when we go into edit it's going to look a lot different than we did when we first actually created this YouTube video. You can see that the entire thing is now in the text editor box here. And so what I usually like is I don't like the player controls inside Blackboard, so I'm just going to get rid of those. So if I select player controls and just delete those, and then I don't necessarily want it to say embedded video player. I just want it to say the history of instructional technology. So I'm going to delete that, maybe the space above it. And then watch this video on the history of instructional technology is way at the bottom. So I'm going to cut that out of there and I'm going to actually paste it right below the, the title. So now we have the title, we have what, what we're going to actually be learning about with this video, and then the video. And then below this, it always has the name of the video again, which we don't really need. So I'm going to delete that out of there. And I do like to keep, though, the duration, because then students know how long they have to work with there. And it is nice to give the user his due. Now, I don't need they don't need to know that this was added at, uh, on, in September of last or two years ago. So I'm going to delete that out of there as well. And then remove all these spaces below too. So now that we have that, I'm going to go in and hit submit. So now, our YouTube video looks a little cleaner than it was before. We have the title, we have what it's going to be about, People, our students can just play it right from the middle, and they can get straight into my History of Instructional Technology video. So there's one more thing I want to talk to you about before we end this video on uh, creating the visual design for your Blackboard course, and I'm going to have to jump into a blank course to show you. Okay, so here I am in a blank course. If I wanted to add something to this course, what it's always going to do by default is it's going to give me an icon, one of just uh, Blackboard's generic icons, and then my uh, text after it. Now me personally, I don't really think the icons that they created for Blackboard are all that great. If you look in self-paced Blackboard, we used all of our own custom ones. and even if you're not using custom icons, uh, it might be nice to have a picture next to your wording and not have to worry about actually the icon then next to it. We don't necessarily need that. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Let's say I went into course documents and I decided that I'm going to build a web link. So I'm going to say that it's Google. And I'm going to choose Google there. And then I'm going to give it the text, uh... okay. Now if I just leave this exactly how it is, if I go and submit it, you can see that it's added it to the very bottom 
and it's added this icon to the top, this little web link icon. Now it might be nice. You might think uh, that, that having those things on there uh, could be a good thing. And in some cases it absolutely will be. But if you don't want those icons to show up, I can show you how to take them away. So I have Google here and I have lots of different dis other types of videos and other types of content. They all have these links around the right hand side if, or left hand side. If I don't care about those, I can click on the downward arrow and say show text only for my courses. Now you can see it doesn't give me those, it doesn't say that this is a, a, a document or that this one at the bottom is a web link. But if you already have uh, put in pictures and you don't want to muddy it up with any of those icons, that's how you can turn it off. And the last thing is if you want to turn it off so that it never shows up, if you go into teaching style and you can see the uh, uh, fifth one down, I think, sixth one down. The content view, if you want only the text to show up always, not the icon and the text, and you can apply this view to all existing content, then if I scroll down and hit submit, now every single one of my course documents and assignments and tests don't have those icons on it. So that's how you can take those icons away uh, if you'd like to. So uh, that basically wraps up the, the visual design of your course. Uh, the, this is a place to be creative um, and, and really try to add something that you think students will, uh, will be drawn to when they uh, click on your course. So if you have any questions or if you have any uh, uh, ideas for content or how to make your, your class more engaging to visual design, I would love to hear them either in the YouTube comments below or in the Blackboard self-paced discussion board. Thanks.